So we're coming up to about uh, the start of academic years now in August and most people will be starting in September. Um, so if you're thinking about what laptop you should be buying for your uh, bioinformatics course or um, bioinformatics PhD project, I'm going to talk a little bit about that um, in this video. So we'll also talk a little bit about things you should avoid um, and the kind of most important specs that you should look out for uh, when you're sort of shopping around for a new laptop. And I've got a couple of recommendations as well, just based on what I've used. So let's kick things off with what you should avoid. So assuming that you want something that just kind of works out of the box, the thing you should avoid for genomics, bioinformatics at least, is Windows. So as I probably mentioned a few times before, um, most genomics bioinformatics kind of happens via the command line. So you need access to um, an operating system that has a command line interface uh, because most of your tools will be, will be designed to work on the command line and just handling big data sets is much, much easier with command line. The operating system that we're interested in is Linux or macOS. If you're not familiar with this, macOS is basically based on a, um, on a Linux operating system underneath. So as far as we're concerned for, for bioinformatics, macOS is, um, is, running, is running a Linux operating system. So MacBooks um, or uh, Linux machines will be your go-to. That's what you want to get. So there is a slight exception to the uh, no Windows uh, policy uh, because you can obviously just load Linux onto a Windows machine and then just use it that way. But um, I'm assuming that you don't want to have to deal with that and um, you just want something that works out of the box. And in that case, we want macOS or Linux. Okay, so we know we need a macOS or a Linux machine. Um, but what kind of specs do you need to look out for um, in, your, in your new laptop or in your new computer? So for me, there are three things that you absolutely need to have on a, um, on a new machine that you're going to be using for genomics, bioinformatics. Um, and two of those don't matter quite as much as the third one. But uh, let's talk about what they are and we'll get into a bit more detail about why I think that. So the first thing I think you need, which is absolutely crucial, is storage space. I would say make sure you get as much storage space as you can possibly, possibly afford. So depending on what kind of um, data sets you're working with, genomes and genomic data sets can be absolutely, absolutely massive. So if you're working with the human genome, a reference human genome will be about three gigabytes. A sequencing sample from, from a patient or from an individual might be 11 gigabytes per read. And so you're looking at 22 gigabytes for a single sequencing sample um, from Illumina's machines. So you want to make sure you have as much storage as you can possibly afford. So the machine I have uh, myself is a 16 inch uh, MacBook Pro. This machine here. And overall, it's a fantastic machine. Um, the only mistake I made is that I didn't get uh, more storage. So I've got 500 gigabytes of storage and you get through that pretty quickly um, when you're working with, um, with human genomes and human sequencing samples. So storage is very, very important. Get as much storage as you can possibly afford. The next specification I would look out for, again, is to get the best you can possibly afford is a decent processor. So it's kind of tricky to recommend uh, which processor to go for, uh, just because this stuff changes so quickly from, uh, from year to year, sometimes a few times within the same year. But you wanna go for one of the higher end processors from, from Intel or, or Apple's new uh, M1 processors. But the reason we want to go for a really for a high-end processor or for as high-end a processor that you can possibly afford um, is that it's going to cut down on your um, on your runtime for for different for different um, analyses. 
So the third thing I think you need to consider, which I actually think is the most important thing you should you should think about when you're when you're thinking about a new a new laptop or a new machine for for bioinformatics, is how comfortable is it. So what I mean here more specifically is that you want to get a machine with a decent high resolution display and a comfortable a comfortable keyboard and trackpad as well. So that's probably the best thing about the about the 16 inch MacBook Pro that I am um, that I have myself is that the display is massive and it's very high resolution and the keyboard is probably the best keyboard on any laptop that I've that I've certainly ever used. So the reason you want to go for something really comfortable is that you're going to sp you're going to be spending a lot of time working on this machine. So you're going to be spending hours a day looking at a display and hammering away at your keys on your keyboard. You want to make sure that the display that you're looking at is not low resolution, it's not too small, it's not too too dim uh, because that stuff kind of takes a toll when you when you have to deal with it over a long period of time on a um, on a research project or on a course. And the reason why I would argue that being comfortable is more important than having a lot of storage and a really good processor is that in all likelihood you're probably going to be doing um, most of your um, analysis and most of your work either on a remote cluster or on a virtual machine so i think i've spoken a little bit about remote clusters before but they are essentially a cluster a grouping of really powerful computers running uh, some kind of Linux um, operating system, of course. And they are essentially bought and maintained by, uh, by universities and research institutions to run analysis on massive data sets. So then if you think about it, you don't necessarily need a laptop that's got a huge amount of storage because your cluster will have a huge amount of storage. And you don't need a laptop that's got a really powerful processor because again your cluster will, will have really powerful GPUs and CPUs to deal with with um, with that data analysis but the reason I think you still need to pay attention to those uh, specs is because at the start of, um, of sort of learning bioinformatics you're going to be doing most of the work on your local machine so you'll be running analysis on that laptop that you kind of have to hand. So while you can deal with a slow processor on your local machine or not enough storage on your local machine by basically exporting all of that to a to an external cluster, there's you can't export your hardware to an external cluster, so you have to deal with your hardware. This is why I say it's it's more important to have a really comfortable machine. Okay, so those are the specs that I think you should look out for on a on a new machine for bioinformatics um, now let's get to some of my recommendations for um, which laptop you should get so the first one is the 16 inch macbook pro that i have myself um, i think it is a pretty fantastic machine because the display is massive you don't need to worry about looking at the command line all day on a tiny display with bad resolution you're not you're not going to have that problem with the macbook pro 16 inch so the downside is it is a very very expensive machine i would only say this is worth it if money is not too much of a concern if you're not concerned about the budget if i was looking for a machine myself i'm not sure i'd buy the 16 inch macbook pro i would probably go with a macbook pro 13 the 13 inch version of this machine or even a MacBook Air, to be honest, and pay a little bit more for the for the storage. And that still works out way cheaper than getting the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is also aging a little bit. So this machine came out in 2019 and you want something a little bit newer than that, to be honest. If budget is not a concern, I would say the 16 inch MacBook Pro is a, is a very good option for the display and the really comfortable keyboard. Otherwise, I would go with the M1 MacBook Pro, 13 inch MacBook Pro. It's got the same great keyboard. The display is not as big, obviously, but um, the clarity and the, um, and the resolution is just as good, if not a little bit better on the 13 inch version. And it is significantly cheaper as well. 
So none of these machines are particularly cheap. They are very, very expensive. I, I, I definitely am very aware of that. They're just kind of my recommendations of what I would go with if I was about to start my project next month. In all honesty, if I had to spend my own money, I would get the 13 inch MacBook Pro. So you can also get them on discount from Amazon. And if I find any good deals, I'll link them, link them down below. Apple do also have a student uh, pricing scheme. So you can also look on, on apple.com, a student shop as well. But still, Amazon generally have better deals than, um, than Apple, even with the student discounts applied. So I've got a little bonus tip as well for, for anyone about to start um, a project in the UK, um, a bioinformatics project in the UK funded by the Medical Research Council. So I didn't actually buy this, this, uh, this laptop. My supervisor bought it for me using... Um, using uh, some of the funding that's kind of given to us by the Medical Research Council to, to buy basically research equipment. And if you're a bioinformatics PhD student, your laptop is your research equipment. So I, can, I, I got my supervisor to purchase this for me. So if you are funded by the Medical Research Council on a bioinformatics project, you can probably get yourself a really nice, really nice laptop um, and you don't have to pay any money at all as long as your supervisor agrees on, on spending it on that, of course. And if you do do that, I would say absolutely get the 16 inch MacBook Pro and um, upgrade the storage. That's the one thing I didn't do on my on my machine. I didn't upgrade the storage, which which kind of annoys me even to this day. So if you're funded by other research, other research councils, I'm not sure um, how they handle this kind of thing, but I would imagine they have something similar. So, I mean, even if you're not in the UK, just ask around and see if your, um, your research group or your, your funding body will just buy you a laptop because they might, they might be willing to do that and you don't have to spend thousands of pounds on it on a new laptop. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. And I think I'm talking to one of my one of my friends who's just about to start a, um, a bioinformatics based PhD project. So that'll be, that'll be quite fun. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.